This is Apostle Calvin Brown of Christ Be Glorified Ministries, and welcome to another broadcast centered around the kingdom of God. Amen. I want to wish you a happy Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Because this is what it's, it's all about. We don't say just Resurrection Sunday, but every, every day, amen. It, we celebrate the fact that Jesus is raised from the dead. Amen. That is how we who are born again entered into the kingdom. The fact that Jesus was raised from the dead, that we actually are raised, amen, with him. Amen. And we make the distinction, amen, as we say resurrection Sunday, not to confuse or collude with anything that is is not of the purity of Christ. In other words, not to connect with anything pagan or centered around this this day. Amen. We everything it should be um, reconciled unto Christ, the Bible says. Things in heaven, things in earth, everything is reconciled unto Christ. Everything is subdued unto, unto Christ. Amen. That which is of the Lord is, is holy and that which is of the Lord is, is pure. Amen. And so there are many times arguments, even <laughs> unstated arguments, disputes between mankind and the Lord. Amen. The, the biggest dispute, and, and this is what causes many people not to even accept all that Jesus has done is the definition of life. There's a dispute between man or many, many people and God about life, not just life, but specifically their life. Amen. Because the Bible says that God has prepared a life for us, God has called us and God has chosen us, amen. It's called the chosen life or being the elect, amen. And our job is to, by faith, to discover that life and live that life unto the Lord, amen. And to be quite honest, whether a person is saved or not saved, they are Many, many people are still disputing with God. They want to live their life, but they don't want to acknowledge or come to the realization that the life that they are supposed to live is the life which is given unto them by God, which is a good life, which is an abundant life. Amen. And so does your life, does it come from God? But does it come from you? The Bible says, unless the Lord build a house, they labor in vain, or they are working in vanity. They're producing emptiness. Amen. The only way to be profitable is to live the life that God has given unto you, to receive of the Lord the things that God has given you to live that life and to produce fruit unto God. Amen. St. John chapter 15, Jesus says that I'm the true vine and that my father is the vine dresser and that we are the branches and that unless the branches are connected to the true vine, then they can do nothing. Jesus says quite plainly, he says, without me, you could do nothing. And yet many people are doing stuff. Amen. Without the Lord, that nothing means vanity, amen. And that people, they brag on their life. They brag on what they accomplish. They brag on um, their education. They brag on their businesses. They, they, they brag on things that they call life, amen. And yet all life comes from God. In 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 14 and 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 
verses 14 and 15. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And he, Jesus, died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Amen. And so we talk about life. We talk about death. And so the word is saying that if you're not receiving the life and living for the one who died for you, everybody was dead. Everyone that is born into this world is spiritually dead. You have to become alive unto God by receiving spiritual life. Jesus is that only life. He says, I'm the way. I am the truth, I am the life, that no one can come to the Father except through him, amen. So this, this whole concept in the world, now you, you, you have to be able to have understanding. You have to be able to break things down. In the world, the world says that money equals life. That's why the Bible says you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve God and mammon. You love one and hate the other. You cling to one and you push away from the other, despise the other. You cannot serve living for, you live for, serving is to worship, to live for. You cannot do both God and, God and mammon. So understanding, the more understanding you have of God, actually the, the, the bigger your world is, the bigger your scope is, so to speak. You're not myopic. You're not narrow in thinking. People accuse Christians of being narrow in their thinking. It's just the opposite. The more spiritual you are, the greater you can see the expanse of the kingdom of God. The operation of God, amen, what God intended for you, amen. Did you know you were created, amen, by God, that you're not a product of evolution, amen. You're, you're, you're not a product of single cell organism popping like popcorn, pop, 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 pop. You're not, Amen. The greater your understanding, you would know that that would be foolish. <laughs> but the more you go after the wisdom of the world, you become so narrow. <laughs> you don't see the vastness of God. You don't see that God created you with a purpose. And that's, that's, what is, that's what it's all about. You're supposed to live for the one who died. So you were dead. And so we want to deal with that. Amen. Until you are born again, you're dead, spiritually dead, separated from God, not able to respond to God spiritually. Amen. On a consistent on a consistent uh, basis, <laughs> amen. The Bible says that your mind was enmity toward God. That means hostile toward God, that you were not subject to the law of God, amen. Neither could you be, amen. Carnal, narrow, natural, natural thinking. And so this day that we call Resurrection Sunday is, is an appropriate time to have conversation. You know, conversation is the ability to expand on what you're, what you're talking about. Two people, whatever, talking about something, the, the, the ability to enter in and to, to expand and expound on it. Amen. To, to find common Nality, amen. Mutual understanding, amen. People that say that they talk to God, but many times they don't commune with God, amen. Many times people say that they, they say prayers, talking to God, yeah. <laughs> it, is, it is dialogue, not just monologue, amen. It's not saying what you think about God. It is being able to respond 
respond to God, to commune with the Lord, and that God is going to lay down some, some truths, amen, even some heavy truths that will require you to be broken, so to speak. If you fall upon the stone, you'll be broken. But if the stone falls upon you, you'll be ground into powder. You, when God speaks, you have to contemplate what God is saying because it is the truth. So how are you relating to God according to the truth that God is speaking unto you? Amen. I remember that when I was born again, amen, when I was about eight or nine years old, amen, but then when I was an adult and I was working at a certain place, amen, and I had uh, received some information of the word of God, but some, some books and things of that nature that, that taught certain things like being filled with the Holy Spirit, amen. And so they quoted scriptures, scripture, scripture, amen. And so I heard the Lord speak to me, amen, after I had consumed this information, which was of the Lord. He says, now that you know this, he says, what are you going to do? I said, Lord, I'll have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, this is me and the Lord talking to one another. This is communication. I said, Lord, it'll be one thing if I didn't know. I said, but now I know. So if I didn't, I would be lying against the truth. God says, he says, now that you know this, he says, what are you going to do? He says that if you don't get filled with the Holy Spirit, being born again. He says, you'll have a good life. He says, you'll have a decent life. And this is God talking, so don't, don't say, God would not say that. He, he said, you'll have a decent life. He says, but you will not fulfill what I've called you to do. Me, me and the Lord talking about his word. The Bible says the entrance of his word brings light. Amen. And so I had a choice, is what I'm saying. If I were to receive the word of God, that would mean to take another step. You, you understand? The Bible talks about how the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. Steps of faith, righteousness is revealed. What God intended for man from the beginning, that's the definition of righteousness that the Lord gave me. Amen. And so I had a choice. And so I responded to God, says, well, um, I'll have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So I followed the word. Amen. I received the word. Long story short, I was, I was filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Now, somebody can argue with that, and the Lord has even spoken to me about that. I, I had had a conversation with the Lord one time about this well-renowned minister who had written a book about being, about being spirit-filled, but it did not include with the evidence of speaking in new tongues. You know, Mark chapter 16, the signs shall follow them that believe. One of the signs is that they will speak with new tongues. So it's, it's the word of God, the mouth of two or three witnesses. And so I had an issue, you know, and I, I was just, you know, spouting off within myself to the Lord. And I'm like, Lord, this is not right. This is not right. This person is leading people astray from the truth. And the Lord says, to leave him alone. It was a man. He says, leave him alone. He says, people speak according to the knowledge that they have. Amen. He says that I will respect the faith of what people operate in. Amen. So people don't like to talk about levels. You know, different levels and different, you know, 
that, that, that a person may be to a certain level and somebody may not be to that certain level. A person can attain and not actually be at the level that God wants them to be. You have to attain to the level that God. And so God says, leave him alone that I will deal with him according to the faith that he operates in. In other words, that it is, it is not on me, amen, to judge another man's servant, amen. God has called us to judge fruit. The Bible says that if a person has the wisdom, have it unto himself, amen. And so you can know things. But it's not your job necessarily to point at ministers <laughs> and, and say that's, that's your calling, that's your job to judge ministers. The Bible says before him they stand or they fall. But you can know what is the truth. What, what am I trying to say? You, you can know something that is true between you and the Lord Amen. But it is not for you to cut down another person. <laughs> Amen. And so one of the biggest words or significant words in the English language is the word if. It is, it is one of the smallest words, but it's one of the most significant words. It's, it's, it's one of the biggest words <laughs> in the human language. Amen. It is used to set up if then um, clauses or if then situation. If this is true, then this is true. Amen. It is it is used in debates and things of that nature to prove that people are taught in debating. You can prove a thing. Amen. That. Now, we don't do this. We operate by faith. But they, they say this, that if you agree, if you get someone to agree that God, if there was a God, that God would be all-knowing, all-seeing, all-loving, omnipresent, amen. If you can get somebody and then you can prove those things and you can prove that there is a God. Amen. But I'm bringing this word into focus because people don't communicate with God. Amen. If, if, if one thing is true, then it elicits a response. Amen. A corresponding response. Amen. If the gospel is true. Amen. That's why people try to tear down the gospel. That when when I came up, when I came up, you know, it's a, it's a lot of folks that may not have been saved, but in my community, that you knew that there was a God, <laughs> and you knew that God was real, whether you had entered into the things of God or not. Amen. We went to church because we knew there was a God. <laughs> Man. We participated. We went to Sunday school. Amen. And then we listened to the preacher's message because we knew there was a God. If there's a God, then what are you doing? <laughs> Man. Because God is not separated or not supposed to be separated from you, the Bible says. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. We are not fervent in the second part of that if-then conversation. Amen. We, we, we are lackadaisical, you know, that we are not fervent, you know, we're supposed to be launched, amen. If there's a God, then we are supposed to serve God. If the gospel is true, we're supposed to receive the gospel fervently, amen. The Bible says that it is good to be zealous in a good thing, amen. So zeal, that extra oomph, that extra energy, 
Amen. It is good to be zealous in a good thing. Amen. And so we, we want to look at the if and the then, you know, because if, if God is the author and the finisher of our faith, if God is the creator, if God is the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, if he's the instigator, if he is the initiator, amen. So there's more weight given to God, we come into existence and then we become aware of certain things, amen. And we begin, we begin to live life according to the things that we are aware of. We call it having wisdom. We call it having knowledge, but true wisdom and knowledge comes from the originator. The creator comes from, from God, amen. And so we are called to respond to God. That's what the altar call is, respond to God. He is God, <laughs> man. If he is God, you know, now look at it. The fool has said in his heart there is no God, and yet he exists. Huh? The fool has said in his heart there's no God, and yet somebody created him. <laughs> Amen. So, so you must meditate. God has given us true meditation. Let the words of my mouth. The meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength, my redeemer. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are just, or noble, or praiseworthy, of a good report, lovely. Meditate on these things that people are afraid to meditate when they are alone because they will come to the conclusion of the matter. Amen that they exist, they have a semblance of life, and they have never given the Lord the honor and the glory for the fact that they are living and their life has not have the, had the proper worth by being and doing what God has called you to do. Amen. It's, it's really simple. We make things complicated because we don't commune. We don't communicate. We don't ask God. Amen. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given unto him. Amen. We're afraid to talk to God, Amen. to be quiet before the Lord. Every time it gets quiet, turn on the TV. Turn on music. I don't know what they do uh, to get music. I guess on the phone or, or these, these uh, speakers or whatever. Turn on music. Turn on the TV. Every time it gets quiet, I'm talking to you. Amen. I'm not talking to somebody else. I'm talking to you. <laughs> Man. Is it you? Hey, man. You can't stand for it to be quiet. The Bible says that I will commune with my spirit as I sit on the bed, amen. I'll be quiet and I will commune with my heart. And so in essence, what you're saying, your heart, you commune with what's in your heart as un, unto the Lord, amen. Talk to God. Are you afraid? <laughs> amen. If this is true, then this is true. <laughs> Praise be to God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12 through 21, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12 through 21, here's another if it says, now, if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is, if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty so that your faith is also empty. Yes, and we are found false witnesses. So if Jesus did not raise, was not raised from the dead, this is what it's all about. We say resurrection Sunday, it is resurrection 
every day because it is resurrection life that we're supposed to live, okay? That we died, amen. If Christ was raised for all, then all died, amen. Everybody was dead. And so Jesus being raised from the dead is everything about our life is contingent on the fact that Jesus raised from the dead. The Bible says he is the first fruit of those raised from the dead. And so because Jesus was raised from the dead, amen, out of that harvest, out of that harvest, we come forth. And so if Jesus was not raised from the dead, then we cannot come forth. The Bible says, unless a kernel grain falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. So just think about it. Jesus, the kernel grain falls to the ground, but that seed has to die to produce other fruit and other seed. So he does not abide alone. Amen. That, that grain falling to the ground produced, produced us. It says, yes, verse 15, and we have found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he did not raise up if in fact the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile and you're still in your sins, then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we're all men most pitiful, pitiable, uh, or miserable, or pitiful, amen, if, if Christ is not raised from the dead, if, but we know he is raised from the dead. That's what faith is all about. How can you have faith? That is what our faith is for. Our faith is to believe God, amen. Number one, to be born again, amen. And to receive a harvest of righteousness, amen. To receive, hallelujah, the blessed benefits of the word of God, amen. Now, we could go into what the gospel is. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to set at liberty those who are bruised. Amen. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. To open prison doors to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. The acceptable year of the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Your debt is is forgiven, amen, you are refreshed, you are made new, you, you are made sound, you are made free, amen. So everything, if this is true, then this is true, amen. You, you'll have to come to the conclusion that God raised Jesus from the dead to benefit from the fact, amen. If we confess with our mouth, if we believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and confess with our mouths, Jesus be Lord, then you shall be saved. Amen. And for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. So this is what it's all about. This is actually substance. Everything else is vanity. Amen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Jesus, the Bible says, is the substance of what people celebrate the, the days and things that people celebrate are shadows, are empty, amen. But the substance must be of Jesus. I'm not saying Jesus is a part of every uh, um, person's holy day. But the, but the Bible says that people go after food and drinks and, and things of that matter as substance. People go after days, amen, as substance, but the substances of Christ. For instance, Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. Amen. And so the substance of people saying, do you celebrate this as Sabbath? Do you celebrate this as Sabbath? The substance is, is Jesus. The substance is, is not the day. The substance is the Jesus 
apart, <laughs> amen. And so the Sabbath is to rest and to keep it holy, amen, is to honor the fact that you do good on the Sabbath. In other words, good works. You rest it, you're not doing your works. That's what I'm talking about. You're not operating in vanity. You're doing the works of the Lord by believing the Lord. And it's showing forth his works. That is the day that we celebrate. And so people, they spend a lot of time in that which is not substance. Amen. The devil has deceived them. They are not participating in the life which God has for them. Amen. In Romans chapter 6, the book of Romans Chapter 6, verses 3 and 4. Romans chapter 6, verse 3 and 4. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? I want you to think about that and meditate on that. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Amen. So I only have so much time, but this is what I want you to know. Baptism, you know, water baptism is a sign. It is symbolic of what actually happened when you were born again. You were baptized into Christ, which means that you were baptized into his death. What does that mean? That means that when you were born again, your old life died. Amen. So that you are one with Jesus. Jesus was crucified. He died for us. Amen. And so we died also. What died? The old life. So just as Jesus was raised from the dead, we were raised also. So if then you, you're participating with the Lord, you, you have to acknowledge that your old life died. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things are of God. Amen. So, so you died, amen. When Jesus died, you died. And the only way to enter in is to be raised. And so we talk about the resurrection of Jesus. Praise God, glory to God. But it's God has called you to be resurrected also. And so that is the point I'm trying to get to, amen. If Jesus was raised from the dead, he was, <laughs> amen, amen then you are supposed to be raised also. Now, that's where it gets a little cloudy as people live their lives. Amen. <laughs> they are not necessarily living a life as a resurrected being. Amen. Because that which is resurrected is different from that which was dead. You, 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 you would understand that something that is dead, your old life, though you were living and doing, and being was death. <laughs> so that's what people refuse to meditate on. Amen. What you was doing. Amen. What you were working. What you were being. Amen. Was your old life is associated with death. Now you are resurrected. Because Jesus is resurrected. Amen. No doubt. <laughs> Amen. That's how we enter in. Now you are raised up. Now you are resurrected. Now, Jesus was raised. That Okay, verse 4, uh, second sentence. That just as Christ was raised from the dead... By the glory of the Father. So this scripture says, just like Jesus was raised by glory. Okay, that's what I want you to get. How was Jesus raised up? God raised him up by that, that the power 
that the glory of God, amen, the same way you're supposed to be raised up by the glory of God. Now, when Jesus was raised up, Jesus said, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me. Jesus was glorified. Amen. You remember the, the scripture where um, there was a voice from heaven, God speaking, you know, um, Jesus, Jesus said, glorify thy son. And then a voice from heaven says, I have glorified him and I will do it again. So Jesus was glorified. So when Jesus was raised up, he was not emaciated. He was not weak. In fact, the Bible says that he spoiled principalities in power made a show of them openly. So Jesus in strength, amen, vitality and vigor and power was raised up the same way we were raised up by the glory, amen. So, so what am I trying to say? I'm saying that is what our life is supposed to be. What keeps our life from being clothed in glory, just like Jesus' life. Amen. It is being clothed with the spirit of the world. Amen. So people may get on to me and my wife. We preach, amen, to be separated from Egypt. Amen. To be separated from the world. So to the degree, this is what I'm trying to say. There are levels. It's just like the Lord told me about that preacher. There are levels of glory. Amen. That people operate in according to the if their death of the old is true. So if you're picking up some of the old, you don't have as much glory on your life because you're not representing that baptism. Amen. That just as Jesus was raised from the dead, you were raised from the dead. Amen. So you are called to be a glorious one, but it is in accordance to resurrection power. Resurrection power being, being on your life. Amen. Part of God's team in the glory. Amen. There must be faith in God's ability to raise from the dead. The gospel is all about re the resurrection power of Christ. So a lot of people don't know that. You're trying to get results. The results come from the resurrection power. In other words, anything that was dead, anything that is decaying, anything that is of corruption, amen. The thief comes not but to steal, kill, and to destroy the devil. How does he do it? Many times he can't kill right away it's by decay. It is by corruption, sickness, and disease, amen, or, or trying to steal from God's people, amen, or to destroy, amen. The devil is trying to destroy. He's trying to kill. He's trying, he's trying to steal, amen. That is a part of the death cycle, amen, the spirit, the law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, has made us free from the law of sin and death. Amen. Corruption. You know, what's, what's that law of sin and death? That corruption sets in, decay sets in, age sets in, and it produces death. I'm not saying that we're not going to die. I'm saying that we are different kind of folk. We are alive unto God in the kingdom of God. All that stuff that is going on with decay and all that stuff, we remove decay, <laughs> amen. When we pray, we release the resurrection power of God. When we decree a thing, we release the resurrection power of God according to the knowledge, according to the understanding of being raised from the dead, resurrection life, the old is passed away. The old is dead. <laughs> Amen. And so are you willing for the old to be dead? 
How willing are you, amen, for the old to be dead, amen. In Colossians chapter 2. So yes, this is Resurrection Sunday. And just as Jesus is resurrected, his people are supposed to be resurrected also. Amen. In verse 12, we are buried with him in baptism, which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. King James says, by faith in the operation of God. So working in operation, meaning the same thing. Your faith is in the working of God to raise things up. Amen. If you actually had faith in resurrection power, it's never over. Amen. And so we have to up our faith. Amen. It's, it's like... Uh, Lazarus, when he when he died and Jesus came four days later, amen, and Jesus said to remove the stone, and his sister and Lazarus' sister said, by now he stinketh, amen. Corruption has set in, amen. Jesus says that he is. Then I tell you, I'm the resurrection, amen. That if you would believe that you would see the glory of God. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about. If you believe in that resurrection power, you'll see the glory. What's the glory? The glory is that which raised Jesus from the dead. The glory is that which displays righteousness. For instance, if a person was sick, amen, and we prayed for them and they were healed, amen, then being healed and whole is a righteous state. And so that's what God had done at the beginning. He put glory on that which was righteous. Amen. And so now we are reversing, so to speak, or expanding our thinking not to accept that which is of death, not to accept that which is of corruption. Amen. So the operation of God means energy is where we get the word energy, faith. And so Paul said it this way, that his, his preaching and teaching was not in persuasive words of men's wisdom, but of power so that your faith would not be in the words of man, but in the power of God. Amen. That's resurrection power. And so everybody, I mean, the churches are packed today. If you believe in resurrection, amen, as you participate in Resurrection Sunday, then God wants you to believe in his ability to raise from the dead, to release the power of God and not to revert to the old knowledge that you knew. Amen. Holy Ghost. Ooh, my, my, my. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Preach on, preacher. I'm preaching. <laughs> Preach, preacher. Preaching to myself. Preach. <laughs> Woo! Ha! <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. And so there is a challenge to believe God. <laughs> Amen. But, but faith is faith. Faith is substance. The faith has to be in the power, the resurrection power of God. You're going to celebrate resurrection? Then celebrate the power, which is of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So there's supposed to be a separation between old life and new life. They're not supposed to touch. Now, that is a challenge. There's supposed to be a separation between old life and new life. They are not allowed to touch. <laughs> new life 
and old life are not to touch because of the resurrection. Amen. You were born again into the kingdom of God. Amen. When you were born again, you were raised up. You were made alive to the new. And so this is what is supposed to happen, even though many of us, it may have come, you know, through um, and later, uh, through, through, through faith. Amen. When you were born again into the kingdom of God, it means to be active. It means to be alert, supercharged, alive, loyal unto God, a mighty man or woman of God, ready to do exploits, not ordinary. Amen. So if the old is passed away with, now you are appearing in the glory and the honor of God. Amen. Now you're able to wield that type of power. Amen. In Philippians chapter three, Philippians. Chapter 3, verses 7 through 11. Paul says, But what things were gained to me, these I've counted loss for Christ. He's talking about the old. Yet indeed I count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I've suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and to be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Amen. And so Paul says that I may know him, verse 10, in the power of his resurrection. Amen. So that he would have a revelation of Jesus's resurrection, all that that entailed. That he, so that if any means he may attain unto the resurrection, attain is to gain, to get unto the resurrection from the dead. And so what Paul is saying that in every aspect of his life, he wants the resurrection power of God to come to full bore. In, in, in other words, that he wants the fullness of the resurrection of the Lord to be seen in his life. And so Paul went through a lot of stuff. Amen. He says that he even had like a death sentence on his life. But yet the life that he lived, he lived unto God. So that resurrection power, think about it this way. You, you remember this one that um, Paul and Barnabas, I believe, were preaching, amen, in a certain place. And uh, they carried them out of the city. They stoned Paul. They stoned him as, you know, you, you stone a person to death. You don't stone a person to give them an ouchie. <laughs> you stone a person to death. And the Bible says, as the saints stood around him, praying no doubt, that Paul got up and went back <laughs> to the city that stoned him and encouraged the brethren. <laughs> Resurrection power. <laughs> Man, I have a life. Look at it. I have a life to live for the, for the Lord. I'm not going to let anything get me down. <laughs> you know, the devil tries to be the master of discouragement, but if he can get to you, he'll try to kill you too. But you can have this mindset, resurrection life, resurrection <laughs> life. And Paul was raised up. Amen. I mean, he talks about being so many Nights, days in, in the midst of the sea. Amen. He talked about being whipped so many times with rods. Amen. And yet resurrection life was working in him so that the newness of life. So that's what Paul was saying. He was saying that that's, it's not that I'm perfect, 
but he was doing more than a lot of folks. <laughs> Amen. He's like, I, I, I want to appear with the Lord in the glory. Amen. And 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, Paul says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. So that's what I'm saying. You're raised again. You're, you're in the glory. You're receiving of that glory, which is the grace of God. You're equipped and empowered energy. Amen. You are empowered by the Lord. And so Paul says he worked, but it wasn't in vain. He labored more abundantly than them all. He was a mighty man. And in today's vernacular, he's a, he's a mighty man of God. In Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 10. Turn to, turn to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter two, I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter two. Verses 10 through 13. Hebrews chapter two, verses 10, for it was fitting for him, Jesus, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things in bringing many sons to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. For both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one, of which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. So that's Jesus speaking of us. He calls us brethren because we allow him to sanctify us, saying, I will declare your name to my brethren in the midst of the assembly I will sing praise to you. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here am I and the children whom God has given me. Jesus says, this is the prophetic reference. He said, here I am and the children which God has given unto me, making reference to that scripture that says, I am. And the children which God has given unto me are for signs and wonders. Jesus says, I and the children which God has given unto him are for signs and, and wonders. Who are those? That he is the captain of their salvation. He is bringing many sons unto glory. Amen. So appearing in the glory to be a mighty man, Jesus in the midst of of us to be a mighty man or woman because you are clothed with glory. What's the glory? The glory means that you have um, renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, that you have renounced the old things of the world. Amen. And now you are living for the Lord, but you're not just living. I'm trying to make the point you're living in the glory. You're living in the power. The Bible says, they that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. You're doing exploits for God. There's a difference. There, there is a vanity on the church where people pretend like they're doing stuff. And yet there's a way for the power to be exhibited. One of the attributes 
of the glory is that the glory covers. Amen. This is a whole teaching. But in a few seconds, being clothed in the glory means that you're not clothed with the world. Amen. In Colossians chapter 3. Amen. I'll try to flesh this out in this last scripture. Colossians chapter 3. Verses 3 and 4. It says, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in the glory. Amen. So it's all about Jesus. It's Jesus' life. You, when you're born again, you receive his life. So you appear with him in the glory. That means that you are on a super team. He's the captain of our salvation. He's the mighty one in the midst of us in the glory. We give all honor and glory to Christ. Amen. So we're able to ride with him, so to speak. We're able to do exploits. We're able to be mighty men and women of God. So the glory, when you are covered, the opposite of glory is shame. Amen. So when a person is naked, it is shameful for a person to be naked. When Adam and Eve sinned, the glory departed. And they knew that they were naked. From that time, people had to be covered. God covered them with an animal sacrifice, pointing to the fact to get us to the place where we are covered with Jesus' sacrifice. Amen. And so the opposite of shame is to be covered. You're covered by the glory. Any part of you hanging out of the glory that is um, that part which is of the world is nakedness. Amen. So you could think that you are a stalwart Christian and you got your you got your arms hanging out, you got your thighs hanging out, amen. Or even worse, you don't even know it because you don't know how to give the Lord all the honor and all the glory, amen, as you give the Lord all the honor and all the glory by renouncing that old life, that, that life died just like Jesus died and you were raised with Jesus. Now you are appearing with him in the glory, full of strength, amen, able to do exploits. Father God, we thank you for that word. We thank you, Father God, that you teach righteousness, Lord God. It's not like we know everything. We always have to spend time with you, Lord. We always have to commune with you. We always have to communicate with you. And we always have to respond back to what you are speaking to us and what you are showing us, Lord God. So, Father God, as much as it's in me, amen, I've, I've tried to give out what you have given me to, to give that people would draw closer to you. And I thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. Amen.